Okay, my name is Wang Zhu. Uh, I'm an attorney and solo practitioner in Flushing, New York. Well, I've been living here for almost 20 years, and uh, actually my first uh, visit to Flushing 25 years ago as a visitor. I visited Flushing, uh, New York City, you know, and uh, 20 years ago after I graduated from grad graduate school in University of Oregon, I moved up to New York, and when I was working in Manhattan, I lived in Flushing. And this is an amazing town because you live in Flushing, it's, it's America, but you feel like, you know, you stay at home, although you're away from home, because you enjoy the culture you're familiar with, right? You have a big Chinese culture here, and uh, the traffic is very convenient. You have airports, you know, two, two airports, JFK, LaGuardia, you have a commuter train to Manhattan, you know, you have a system of a bus here. So it's very uh, a good location for business and for living. Well, uh, the Flushing neighborhood, you know, nowadays, probably more than 60 Chinese. When I came here, uh, I lived in a co-op apartment at uh, 149th Street in Sanford Avenue. At that part, apartment at that time, about 10% uh, Chinese, 90% non-Chinese. But nowadays, when I revisited that apartment, probably the statistics is just the opposite. Uh, probably 90% residents, co-op residents are Chinese. You know, so that's a big change over the 20 years. Well, uh, I think the Flushing, you know, needs more school, elementary school, you know, middle school, high school, and uh, the school here is very crowded. My two kids are in public school in Flushing. Every class, they have more than 30 students, which is very crowded according to New York City standard, but that's the way it is. Uh, middle school, you know, junior high, also very crowded. And uh, the resources, uh, I think the city resources are not balanced, okay? Uh, particularly for communities like Flushing. We have uh, more new immigrants than any other community in New York City. So the school, they have an ESL program for students just coming from the U.S., you know, first year, second year. But their staff, they, they need more staff. They're culturally sensitive or they are linguistically prepared to deal with their new students. So this is something that is, I think the city should take care of it. Right? right now, a lot of parents complain that the classrooms uh, are very crowded, and the teachers' communication with parents, they have problems. Okay? I have clients get reported by the teacher, say, you abuse the child, but actually the parents did not abuse the child. You know, so now when I go to court, we, when we go through the court proceeding, facts will come out. We, we go on this way. Very often, the teachers or school counselors, they misread the information from students, say the parents abuse their children. So to my understanding, most Chinese parents are very loving parents. They don't abuse their children, okay? But there's a cultural conflict. When you deal with your life in your traditional way, and this is America, it's a new society, we have different culture. So how you communicate, how you send a message to your child that as parents you are concerned about their education, their behavior, you know, how you want to monitor, how to discipline your children. This is something we have to communicate between the teachers and the parents, the community. It is very special. I don't think the other regular community have this problem. But I have seen many parents arrested every year because they are being charged for child abuse, charged for uh, abandoning their child, or endangering the welfare of their children. And uh, many cases, when we go through criminal proceeding, they are not criminal. They are not convicted because, uh, you know, actually, it's misunderstanding something. Okay, so this is uh, uh, amazing thing for flushing. You always have conflict the new immigrants and the mainstream culture. We have 
every day that's our daily life you know so I think working in flushing I have opportunity to be a bridge between my non-speaking clients and the society the school right I think New York City should put more new school around the flushing okay put more teachers more classrooms otherwise you know the quality will not be good well uh, as an attorney, you know, my life is dealing with people that have trouble, right? My, uh, there's one case I would talk about it, this I remember vividly. You know, a child, uh, a parent, father, mother was arrested because their infant baby died. And the police charging the parents, you know, uh, endangering the welfare of their child. And that's something like uh, neglecting. You're neglecting your child and causing deaths, you know. And they were, it was painful for the parent because they lost their child. And then they lost uh, another child. They have a four-year-old son. SES took away the son, right? Criminal court proceeding for the father. And a family court want to take, take the four-year-old son away because a baby child will, will die on the premise, in their apartment, you know. So it's, it's a pain, it's a pain. I don't think the, the clients, you know, want to neglect their child. The child died, the autopsy report didn't show the real cause of the death. How can you charge a parent, you know, for endangering the welfare of a child? So this, this case is always hinge on my, on my head. As a new immigrant, a lot of people have trouble not because they don't behave, but because there's misunderstanding between the two cultures. Even some policemen, they don't know what Chinese live like. Okay? So they judge people as what they think, you know, but actually, as a new immigrant society, community, we have something special. But I don't think NYPD will address this way. Okay, they have a citywide standard of practice. Right? They arrest the people as, as long as they get a report. But actually, very often, we have found that people abuse the system. Innocent people got arrested in the immigrant community. That's a, that's a fact. You know, so I, I think this, this is a pity. Right, this is a pity. This a lot of lessons for NYPD to learn how to respect the, te you know, immigrants, their particular culture. Like in Russian, we have Chinese, Korean, uh, Indian, right? Bangladesh. We have different communities, so it, it's difficult. This is a difficult thing, you know. So if you ask me what I remember, I remember this case. Uh, this case is always, you know, something I have to review when I talk to my client. You have to respect the law, you have to know the law, you have to know the new culture, you know. But it seems that policemen, the department, they don't have to learn the new culture because the immigrant culture for them is a new culture. They don't have to learn. But uh, we as new immigrants, we have to learn, you know, yeah. Well, this law firm is uh, basically I'm a solo practitioner. Uh, the office is located in Flushing. So 90% of my clients are Flushing residents. So I, I have to practice immigration law because people need their green card, you know, citizenship. I have to practice some um, uh, criminal cases, as I said. When people were arrested, they need a legal counsel, they need a defense. So I'm a bilingual person guy. I, I know the law. I know what the immigrants think about, right? So I think, you know, in this way, uh, I'm serving the community as well. Right? And uh, also I do real estate because new immigrants, they want to buy a house, they want to establish their business. So I do real estate, uh, general business, okay? Uh, that's my daily life. I serve, you know, each, the individual clients in Flushing. Yes, and this is a very interesting job.